The house is looking disastrous right now. Please tell her to hurry back and clean up. My mother-in-law came all the way to my parents' house just to tell me that. But then, my mom made an even more shocking statement. My daughter passed away yesterday. I'm Kat, a 27-year-old housewife. It's been a year since I married Wayne. We met at our mutual friend's house party. I wasn't good at meeting guys, so my sweet friend set it up for me. That's where I met him. Hi, can I join you? Oh, sure. It was a couple of hours into the party when he suddenly popped up. We talked about a lot of things, and he asked me many questions, which made it easy for me to keep the conversation flowing. We were glued in our seats, talking until the wee hours, and I was hoping I would see him again. Luckily, he felt the same way, and we exchanged our numbers at the end of the night. From then on, we messaged each other every day and started casually dating. As we got to know each other better, he asked me to be his girlfriend. We kept our relationship fun and loving without any major quarrels. Your cooking is amazing. I'm impressed by the taste. Really? I'm so happy to hear that. I'll make you more. Whenever he came over, I often cooked for him. Seeing him enjoy my food delighted me. If we got married, I thought I'd be cooking like that for him every day. I couldn't help but smile at the thought. I did hope to marry him someday. Then, about a year into our relationship, he popped the question. Will you keep making delicious meals for me? Marry me. I was totally caught off guard by how quickly it happened, but I was ecstatic. Yes, I love you so much. Hence, the wedding preparation began. We quickly informed our parents and had the customary meet and greet. Then we tied the knot in a beautiful ceremony. Many friends and co-workers blessed us at our wedding, and I felt an overwhelming sense of happiness. We had been living separately up to that point and finally moved in together. Wayne wanted me to focus on being a homemaker, so I quit my job to become a full-time housewife. I did my best to provide a comfortable home for him by expanding my cooking skills and keeping the house squeaky clean. However, there was one thing that grabbed my attention about Wayne after living together. He was way messier than I imagined. First off, he always left his clothes lying around. It was a common sight to see his socks or t-shirts scattered on the living room floor after he had taken them off. And after eating, he didn't bother to take his own dishes away but went straight to the sofa to lie down. I understood that it was my job to do the chores as a housewife, but I wished he'd be a bit more mindful about how he lived. Another surprise was that he couldn't do his tie by himself, and I had to help him. How did you manage before? Mom used to do it for me. Seriously? By the way, she used to iron my shirts every day. Can't you do it too? Um, okay, I'll iron them. Don't mess it up, okay? He deliberately sighed, tinged with a touch of irritation. His attitude disturbed me. He was sincere and kind before we got married, but something changed since then. He became colder towards me and acted more like a domineering husband, always nitpicking about what I did. Hey, why are we having fish today? Um, it's nutritious, and we had meat yesterday, so I thought fish would be good for today. Are you kidding me? You know I like red meat, right? I don't want to eat fish. But he often expressed his selfish desires. Hey, my shoes aren't polished enough. Make sure the beer is ice cold. Don't serve all the dishes at once. It's overwhelming, you know? Serve them like a course, one by one. Honestly, his demands were tedious, and it was getting on my nerves. Whenever I couldn't meet his standard, he'd blame me, saying, Mom always did it perfectly. Apparently, he was overly pampered and catered to by her for everything. I resented her for spoiling him so much. 
A few months into our marriage, we went over to his parents' house for the first time, and I witnessed a surprising scene. Welcome back, my dear. So good to see you. Hey, Mom. Glad to be back. Carrying such heavy stuff. Poor thing. Give it to me, I'll take care of it. Thanks, Mom. I'm baking your favorite cake, so let's have it together. Oh, sounds good. I'd love some coffee made by you too. Of course, dear. Come, come, have a seat on the sofa. Miranda was only talking to Wayne nonstop, completely ignoring me like I wasn't even there. Larry, my father-in-law, greeted me and we engaged in a conversation, but Miranda was stuck to Wayne the whole time. Sorry about that, Cat. Miranda tends to be overprotective, and I've always tried to caution her, but she never listens. She's been like that forever. Wayne, well, he's overly dependent too, and I'm ashamed of it. I hope he's not causing trouble at home. Um, well... Oh, I guess he is, huh? I'm really sorry. I'll make sure to talk to him about it. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. I was relieved to know he had a better sense than the other two. If he had been as troubling as Miranda, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. Still, I was quite flabbergasted by how she treated Wayne. If she raised him that way, no wonder he turned out selfish and unable to do anything on his own. Maybe the issue was his environment, and I thought I may have been able to correct him. So I gathered up the courage and decided to point out his bad habits. Honey, leaving your stuff scattered everywhere like this isn't cool. I have to pick them up and put them in the laundry basket, you know? If you could do that yourself, the house would look a lot neater. Why do I have to do such a hassle? Maybe because you think it's a hassle, that's why you don't do it. By any chance, is your desk at work messy too? People around you might find it appalling and think you're incapable. What? I'm fine at the office. That might just be your perception. Habits at home definitely spill over to work. Ugh, fine. After I pressed him, he finally made some effort. The tactic appeared effective with him, so when I asked him to take his place to the kitchen, I mentioned it was to prevent any embarrassment for him at work. I was able to manipulate him, but sadly it didn't last long. One day, while I was relaxing at home, the doorbell rang. I was surprised to see Miranda standing at the front door. Oh, Miranda, is everything alright? Let me in. She just marched in without waiting for an answer. What's the matter? You should offer some drinks first, don't you think? You're inconsiderate. Oh, sorry. She showed up unannounced and ordered me around. I asked her what she'd like and served her the drink. While she drank it, she glared at me. What's your problem? Excuse me? I hear you're saying terrible things to Wayne regularly. That he's incapable at work and that people around him must be contemptuous. Oh, that's... He's exceptionally bright. No doubt everyone around respects him. How could a wife speak so horribly to her own husband? It seemed like he only conveyed the hurtful words to his mother, twisting the facts. And she just took whatever he said at face value and blamed me. I was exasperated. The situation had become quite a mess. He's special, you know. So, it's only natural for everyone to take care of him apart from work. Why can't you understand that? I was speechless. Having such distorted affection, she wasn't just overprotective. It went beyond that and it gave me the creeps. Then she made an unbelievable statement. Since you seem incompetent as a housewife, I'll come over to guide you. Huh? How's that? Isn't it great? Um, no. That's, uh, it's okay. What? Did you just say no? You seem to be severely disillusioned. You don't even realize that you're incompetent. I feel for Wayne for getting such a useless wife. Brace yourself. I'll whip you into shape. She was getting worked up all by herself. It was definitely going the wrong way. 
At that time, it seemed she had only come to tell me all that and left once she was done. That night, I confronted Wayne. Hey, why did you tell your mom things that aren't true? Huh? Things that aren't true? I told her exactly what happened. The fact that you hurt me is real. But I just wanted you to change. You just have to do the housework better. I heard she's coming over every day from now on. You better learn well from her. Don't you dare be rude, okay? He was completely on her side. Just as she doted on him, he also seemed to dote on her like a mama's boy. She started coming over the next day, just as she said. What's with all this dust? You haven't cleaned at all. This tastes terrible, so pathetic. That's why you're a useless wife. I wish Wayne would throw you out. I wondered why I had to be belittled like that. Her daily visits were becoming a significant source of my stress. As time went on, my health deteriorated and I decided to get checked up one day. To my astonishment, I found out that I was pregnant. Although it was unexpected, I felt joy knowing that my child was on the way. I immediately informed Wayne. Pregnant? Yeah, we're having a baby. Oh yeah? Well, keep doing your chores properly like before. Huh? I was puzzled by his reaction. He didn't sound happy about it at all. I told Miranda as well, but she reacted similarly to him. Don't slack off on the housework just because you have morning sickness and inconvenience Wayne. What? I was stunned and questioned their mindset. I felt it wouldn't be good for my mental health to be around them any longer. I was sure Miranda would keep harassing me and Wayne would keep acting selfishly. It would not only affect me, but also the baby. So when Wayne went to work and just before Miranda arrived, I quickly packed my bags and went to my parents' home. They were surprised when I suddenly showed up. When I explained the situation, they sympathized and were furious at the two. They said I could stay as long as I wanted due to the circumstances of my pregnancy. I took their words and resolved to stay for a while. As expected, Wayne called me non-stop. Hey, why aren't you home? Where are you? I'm at my parents' house. What are you doing there? Are you insane to skip your duty for that? I'm here to protect myself and the baby. If I stayed with you and your mom, I would definitely have a breakdown. So I'm not coming back. Cut it out. Do you think you can do whatever you want? Come back now. No way. I don't want to talk anymore, so I'm hanging up. Hey. I hung up and then blocked his number. I didn't want to deal with any more trouble from him. At that moment, I made up my mind to divorce him and raise my child alone. My parents agreed that it was for the better. For a while, I didn't receive any emails or visits from Wayne. I figured he was scared to face my parents. Miranda didn't have my number, so she couldn't reach me. I managed to stay away from them for a whole month, allowing myself to mentally recover. However, Miranda must have had enough of me being away for that long. She came to see me unannounced. As I let out a sigh of annoyance and was about to open the door, my mom told me to stay in my room. Then she opened the door and began dealing with a Miranda. It's been a long time. What can I do for you today? Miranda widened her eyes and shouted, Bring out your daughter. Her house is looking disastrous now. Please tell her to hurry back and clean it up. She came all the way just to tell me that. Apparently, Wayne had been making a huge mess, and every time she went there, she had to spend a lot of time cleaning. So she needed me to come back and take over the responsibilities. She completely disregarded the fact that I was pregnant. I was flabbergasted. Then my mom made a surprising statement. She passed away yesterday. What? What are you talking about? Miranda was shaken and I was also stunned by it. She passed away? Huh? I asked her to run an errand on the way back from the doctor. But then she got hit by a car that ran a red light. That's why I can't bring her out, even if you ask. L what My mom was totally serious, so Miranda seemed to believe her. I, 
I'm sorry for your loss. I didn't expect to hear this. I said many terrible things to her. I was just thinking about my son, but she must have been hurt. No, I intentionally hurt her. Said horrible things to her. I'm really sorry. Ah, uh, I see. Indeed, she was deeply hurt by you and Wayne. That's why she came back to us. If she hadn't returned here, she might not have had an accident. Y yes that's right. I'm really sorry. I don't know how to apologize enough. Miranda, overwhelmed with guilt, covered her face with both hands. Have you realized how badly you've hurt my daughter? Yes, I'm really ashamed. She kept apologizing and my mom stopped her. Please, forgive me for going a bit too far. Actually, Kat is alive. Huh? But the fact remains that she's deeply hurt and needs to rest. Only after hearing that she passed away did you finally admit your fault. If we had talked assuming she was alive from the beginning, it wouldn't have turned out this way. I apologize for my rough action. Miranda had a complex expression, but didn't blame her. It's because I pampered my son too much that he turned into an incompetent and irresponsible man. I'm really sorry for causing trouble. Miranda seemed to have truly reflected on her actions, but that didn't erase what had happened before. Afterward, I told Wayne that I wanted a divorce. He initially protested, saying that it was out of the question. But after my in-laws persuaded him, he reluctantly agreed. Subsequently, they came to apologize to me. They promised to re-educate him and assured me they'd ensure he paid child support on time. Currently, he's under strict discipline at his parents' house. They seem to be instructing him on how to take care of himself and cook. Despite complaining, he's in a situation where he has no choice but to do the chores, albeit clumsily. Occasionally, my in-laws get to see their grandson. As for Wayne, I plan to decide whether to involve him in a child's life based on my in-law's assessment of his maturity. Meanwhile, I've started working again and getting support from my family and raising my son. I'm working hard to earn enough for his future education and to allow him to pursue his interests. My mother-in-law seems to dislike me should I ask for a refund on the house purchase I funded? Huh? My husband was perplexed, but when I revealed a certain fact, his attitude changed dramatically. Is that true? My name is Jamie, and I'm a 35-year-old remote worker. I've been married to Daniel for three years. We met during university, not dating at the time, we started dating when we met again at a reunion of the club we belonged to. After about a year of dating, we decided to get married. Since I had been focused on work and had no dates, marrying him felt like a miracle. I truly believe he's the right partner. Our married life has been enjoyable, and even now, three years later, we feel happy. However, Recently, a significant change occurred in that happiness. It started with my father-in-law's health issues. He is not yet in need of nursing care, but he has to make frequent visits to the hospital. My mother-in-law asked us to move in with her because she was worried about her old age and other things. Since I didn't have a negative impression of my in-laws, I didn't oppose when my husband brought up the idea of cohabitation. We've been married for three years now, and we've had our fair share of life as a couple. I thought it would be nice for my in-laws to live with our grandchild when we have one. 
When I agreed to living together, my husband was extremely pleased. Thank you so much. Mom and Dad will definitely be thrilled. For the sake of our in-laws and seeing my husband happy, it was good. After that, we moved from our previous place to live with our in-laws. Dad, Mom, I look forward to being with you from today. Likewise, nice to meet you. I'm truly sorry for causing inconvenience because of me. No, please, don't say that. That's right. Supporting each other is what family does. Right? Thank you, both. My father-in-law used to be active, always full of energy, enjoying outdoor activities like mountain climbing and fishing when he was in good health. So the current situation with his health issues affecting his legs and back is quite shocking for him. I felt the need to take care of his mental well-being. And thus, our cohabitation life began. At first, I thought things were going really well. Mom, I've prepared lunch. Oh, thank you. That's a relief. Today, the hospital was quite crowded. I'm really hungry now. My mother-in-law expressed gratitude when I did housework. My father-in-law did not yet need care, but he had to be accompanied to the hospital, and my mother-in-law was having a hard time, so I wanted to support her as much as I could. I work during the day, but as a remote worker, I can quickly respond to any situation. After finishing a certain amount of work, I went shopping, and I managed cleaning and laundry in between. That way, I tried to balance work and assist my mother-in-law to reduce her burden. However, around a month after the start of cohabitation, my mother-in-law's attitude began to change. Jamie, why are you always playing in your room? What's your intention? Huh? Playing? Yes, you open your computer, do online shopping and watch foreign dramas, don't you? Um, well, I'm working. Huh? Working? What nonsense are you spewing? Daniel explained this to you, right? I work remotely. I can't believe that. Because you're always watching dramas. I can hear the sound coming from your room. You're playing, not working. I hate such lies. Were you playing while I was going through a hard time? Accompanying my husband to the hospital? That's really awful. No, you see... I don't need excuses. Be more careful from now on. My mother-in-law left the room in anger. I work as a translator and French language tutor. I primarily do translation work on the computer. And my French tutoring job involves online classes, also using a computer. Perhaps my mother-in-law is hearing my spoken French and misunderstanding it as dialogue from foreign dramas. Even with such a misunderstanding, it's troublesome. I immediately reported the incident to my husband. Hey, today your mom said this to me. Huh? Really? Mom said that? As I nodded, my husband was at a loss for words. I'll go talk to mom for a moment. Then my husband went to his mother's room. Curious, I went near my mother-in-law's room. She seemed upset about something. Why do I have to endure this anger? Jamie is working. I explained that before, right? What are you talking about? She's always just playing on the computer. You wouldn't know since you're not home during the day, but she's not working. Besides, it's impossible to be working without going out to an office. In your time, it might be hard to understand. But nowadays, many people work remotely. My mother-in-law seemed unable to comprehend this. Then, my father-in-law, who was in the room, spoke up. Daniel and Jamie both say she's working. And she's helping with the housework. Isn't that appreciated? At least our life has become easier compared to before we lived together. That may be true, but... Okay, fine. I won't blame her anymore. My mother-in-law reluctantly agreed. 
Hopefully, she'd be quieter now. After this, my mother-in-law didn't say anything particular to me. However, at the same time, she stopped showing any kindness. Jamie, eat lunch? Oh, forget it. You must be busy with work, right? No, I can take a lunch break and make it. Oh, really? Can you freely interrupt work so easily? I find it suspicious. Well, if you say you're working, I have no choice but to believe it. My mother-in-law kept making mean comments like this every day. However, since she didn't interfere with my work, I couldn't discuss it with my husband much. Constantly complaining to him wouldn't put him in a good mood, and it might seem like I was overreacting. So I decided to endure the slight teasing. From then on, despite all the complaints, I continued to work and do my chores properly. And then I realized that it had been a year since we started living together. My husband seemed quite busy with work, and recently he had been working overtime more. I did my best every day not to burden him. However, my mother-in-law's attitude remained unchanged. Moreover, taking advantage of me working hard for my husband, she started imposing various tasks on me. As a result, I ended up doing all the housework lately. All my mother-in-law does is accompany my father-in-law to the hospital, and that's only once a week. So it's pretty easy. Yet my mother-in-law keeps nagging and complaining about me. Are you playing around today, or are you actually working? You're always staying at home and hardly ever going outside. Are you a shut-in? How about going out a bit? Should I ask you to go to my husband's hospital? No, that's. I have work to do. Sure, sure, work, right? I understand. Working or just watching foreign dramas. My mother-in-law continued to berate me as usual. It happens all the time when my husband and father-in-law are not around. And she makes other snide remarks about me. When are you going to give birth to a child? When will I see my grandchild? I have discussed it with my husband. Right now, it's a period where we're both focusing on our careers. Work again? Our requests are never taken seriously, huh? What do you really think of your parents, Daniel? You're surely being deceived by her. Why did I have to hear such things? I was getting fed up with the constant bullying. Amidst all this, my husband and I achieved a certain goal. It was regarding our savings, and together we managed to accumulate enough money to buy a house. My husband and I had been planning to purchase a home for a long time, and finally it seemed like we could make that dream a reality. However, there was one problem we faced during this time. It was about living with my in-laws. Considering the current situation, if we bought a house, my in-laws would also move into the new home. I wasn't fond of my mother-in-law, but my father-in-law was kind, and above all, I was concerned about his health. So it seemed reasonable to continue living together. But honestly, I didn't want to endure my mother-in-law's bullying any longer. When I thought about it, I came up with a certain idea. Hey, when we purchase the new house, I have a suggestion. How about making it a two-family home? Huh? A two-family home? Yeah, that way your mom and dad and we can all have our privacy, and each of us can have spacious rooms. I think it would be great. It certainly makes sense. The current place is a bit cramped. Besides, I come home late, and I worry about waking up my parents. See, that's why I think a two-family home would be better for our new place. All right, let's do that. I felt relieved that my husband agreed. When my husband discussed the idea of buying a new home with his parents, they were both pleased. What an attractive idea! I'm so happy. But is it really okay? Wouldn't a new home be something a couple would want to live in alone? Don't worry about that. Exactly, dear. We're still living together now, so getting a new house won't change anything. Oh, but I'm thinking of making the new house a two-family home. Huh? 
Two family? Why two family? Living together as we do now is just fine, isn't it? Well, my job is demanding and I come home late, so I want to be considerate of both sides. Besides, having a two-family home means we each have more space, and if we make your side barrier free, it'll be much easier for you, Dad. When four adults live together, things tend to accumulate, and if, in the future, Dad needs a wheelchair or something, having limited space would be inconvenient. Also, though we don't have plans for it now, when we have kids, living separately might be safer. Little kids tend to run around a lot, you know? This... this isn't cohabitation. Well, isn't it fine? I think it's okay if Daniel and Jamie proceed as they wish. Are you saying that too? Daniel and Jamie are the ones looking to buy a house, and they're making it a two-family home so we can live nearby. You should be grateful for that alone. Natalie reluctantly agreed after being told that by her husband. Well, it was clear she wasn't fully convinced, and when it came to buying the house, my in-laws offered to contribute, but we declined. It was a decision made by my husband and me. As a result, we decided not to take any money from my in-laws. From there, we continued with various plans for buying the house. My mother-in-law still didn't seem fully convinced, but even so, the idea of a new house made her happy and excited. Generally, her mood was better, so the usual teasing towards me seemed lighter. After a few months, the day to move into our renovated new home finally arrived. The new house after the renovation was so magnificent that we were excited at first sight. Wow, amazing! So this is our new home. It was worth diligently saving money, right? Yeah, indeed. Well, it's splendid! At my age, to be able to live in such a beautiful house again? This is truly appreciated. Thank you both. My father-in-law expressed his gratitude happily to us. Thank you, Daniel. It's fantastic. My mother-in-law thanked only my husband, which bothered me a little bit, but I decided to assume that she only mentioned my husband's name because he was her son. From there, we each began living in our new homes. The new home was incredibly comfortable. With just the two of us, there was plenty of space and, most importantly, there were many moments without my mother-in-law making life more relaxed. I could focus on work. That's what I thought, but within a week of starting our new life, my mother-in-law began trying to visit our house repeatedly. The doorbell rings repeatedly. She knows I'm home because I've mentioned working from home. Despite that, she persistently rings the doorbell. Under such circumstances, I can't concentrate on work. So I reluctantly have to open the door and let my mother-in-law in. She walks around our house, and... So this is what it looks like, she says, starting an impromptu room tour. And then she proceeds to offer me snacks and coffee and turns on the TV without asking. Uh, um, mom? What are you doing? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just relaxing, so feel free to do your work. No, if you want to relax, wouldn't it be better to do it in your own home? Huh? What? Are you, as a daughter-in-law, trying to give me orders? I was against living separately to begin with. You probably wanted to have a separate house, right? You're such a terrible woman, avoiding me. But, um, is it okay to leave Dad alone? He's fine. Even if something happens, I can reach him from this distance. Well, leaving him alone? Then if you're so concerned, why don't you stay over there with him? Huh? Wait, that feels a bit different. Then don't interfere. My mother-in-law said that, and forcefully stayed. And then she even went to my father-in-law's place to make lunch. And then she came back here to relax. While I was working, I couldn't concentrate because my mother-in-law was loudly watching TV. Mom, could you lower the volume a bit? Shut up! Don't talk to me! I'm at a good part right now. You're the loud one and my mother-in-law once forced me to accompany my father-in-law to the hospital because she had her own business to attend to. Originally, I had a French teaching class scheduled, but I had to apologize to the students and reschedule, filling in for my mother-in-law at the hospital. My father-in-law apologized repeatedly and treated me to lunch as an apology. 
My father-in-law is on my side because he believes I am doing my job properly. Apparently, my mother-in-law doesn't like that either. So, she treats me harshly. Her attitude towards me has become even harsher since we moved to the new house. So, I've reached the point where I can't bear it anymore. One day, I called my husband to the living room saying I had something to talk about. What's wrong? Why the serious tone? It seems your mom doesn't like me. So, I'm thinking about asking for a refund of the money I contributed to buying the house. Huh? My husband was puzzled. Well, you would be surprised to hear such a thing out of the blue. But when I told him a certain fact, his attitude suddenly changed. Is that true? Your mom has been disturbing me while working at home, and it's been affecting my concentration. Then I talked about how his mother pressured me about having grandchildren and insulted me, suggesting I might be infertile. Gradually, my husband's face turned red, and he headed to his parents' side of the house. I followed him out of the house. What? What's suddenly going on? Mom, cut it out. I heard it from Jamie. You've been coming to this house during the day, disturbing her work. I'm not doing such a thing. Mom, don't play innocent. I have security cameras installed in my house. Huh? I was worried that something might be stolen, so I have footage of you relaxing in our house all the time. But that's... When I said that, my mother-in-law looked surprised. Weren't you always saying that you go for a walk for your health? Also having tea with neighbors. So all this time you are going to Jamie's place and disturbing her work? Um, well, that is... Cornered, my mother-in-law finally spoke her mind. Because I didn't like it. What's with this working from home thing? You always look so comfortable that you don't look like you're really working. I see. So mom, you were jealous. But even if you say you're working, it's just pocket money. I could earn that much with a part-time job. Then try earning as much as Jamie does. She earns more than I do. What? Don't you work for a major company? Is that really true? I work as a translator and a French tutor. Thankfully, I get jobs from various clients for both. So I earn about $5,000 a month. No way! That's a lie, right? It's not a lie. Jamie covered half of the house purchase cost. What? Seems like you looked down on Jamie quite a bit, and you lied to me, deliberately causing trouble. I can't forgive someone like that. We're getting a divorce. That? Wait! Why does it have to end in a divorce? We talked about this before. When you begged me not to divorce you after your affair in the past, you promised not to hurt or betray me again. If you disillusion me again, we'll definitely divorce. What's that? This is the first I'm hearing of. Sorry. I thought it wasn't something I should talk about, so I kept quiet. That time, you were still in high school, and it was a sensitive period for you. I see. I mean, my mom is the worst. She had an affair, and then she went on to bully my wife. There's no redemption. We're cutting ties with her. Wh what If even you abandon me, where should I go? You reap what you sow. Live on your own. Shockingly, my mother-in-law was handed divorce papers by my father-in-law and kicked out of the house. Afterwards, she managed to move to a cheap, shabby apartment working part-time to sustain her modest lifestyle. On the other hand, with my mother-in-law gone, I've been able to live in peace. I regularly check on my father-in-law, and when my husband comes home early, we invite him over for dinner. Then, six months later, it was revealed that I was pregnant. Now, my husband, father-in-law, and I eagerly anticipate the arrival of our soon-to-be-born child, enjoying these happy days together.